acne. Introduction Acne is a chronic inflammatory disease of the pilosebaceous units. Excessive sebum is the main risk factor for the acne. The production and excretion of sebum are under the influence of androgenic hormones and mediators, such as insulin-like growth factor 1 and epidermal growth factor. Acne is characterized by seborrhea, the formation of comedones, erythematous papules, pustules, and less frequently by nodules, cysts, and scarring. Pathogenesis of Acne The development of acne involves a series of interconnected factors. Increased sebum production, hypercornification of the pilosebaceous duct, the colonization of the duct with cutibacterium acnes, formerly known as propionibacterium acnes, inflammation. The progression of acne involves a sequence of events. The process begins with the secretion of interleukin-1, which triggers the activation of keratinocytes, the cells that make up the outermost layer of the skin. Elevated interleukin-1 levels lead to increased keratin production. This surplus keratin contributes to the clogging of hair follicles. The clogged follicles create a conducive environment for comedone formation, which are the initial non-inflammatory lesions, often called blackheads or whiteheads. The upper part of the follicle becomes obstructed by the comedone, causing the lower part to dilate. Eventually, the dilated follicle may rupture, releasing its contents such as keratin, free fatty acids, and triglycerides into the surrounding dermis. In this dermal environment, Cutibacterium acnes, a type of bacteria, thrives and multiplies. The presence of these substances and bacteria triggers an inflammatory response. This leads to the development of various acne lesions, including papules, pustules, nodules, and cysts. Apart from the pathogenesis, several other factors influence the development of acne. Environmental factors Hot, humid climates, emotional stress and strain, people working in oil or chemical industries, external application of oils and comedogenic products. Dietary factors Glycemic index Diets high in glycemic index foods can evaluate insulin levels, leading to increased production of insulin-like growth factor 1. Insulin-like growth factor 1 contributes to follicular epithelium growth, sebum production, and androgen synthesis, all of which play a role in acne development. Milk and Dairy Consumption of milk and dairy products can elevate endogenous insulin-like growth factor 1 levels, which can further stimulate sebum production and androgen synthesis, contributing to acne formation. Types of Acne Pillsbury's classification categorizes acne into four grades based on its severity. Grade 1 It's characterized by the presence of comedones, open or closed, and occasional papules. Grade 2 In addition to comedones and papules, this grade includes a higher number of pustules. Grade 3 It's predominantly marked by pustules along with the presence of nodules and abscesses. Grade 4 Is mainly characterized by the presence of cysts, abscesses, and scars. Treatment and Prevention of Acne Aims of Treatment to reduce follicular flora to reduce lipases. To remove the follicular obstruction. To reduce inflammation. To reduce sebaceous gland activity. Topical therapy for acne. It's indicated in mild and moderate acne. Topical antibiotics. Erythromycin. Clindamycin. Benzoyl peroxide has a bacterial static effect and comedolytic effect. It is the drug of choice in drug-resistant acne. Azelaic acid. It has an antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, and comedolytic effect. Topical retinoids. 
retinoic acid, adapalene, to xarotene. Retinoids decrease the abnormal keratinization from the pilosebaceous units, thus unplugging the follicle. Topical retinoids are to be used for maintenance therapy. Oral therapy for acne. It's indicated in moderate to severe acne. Antibiotics. Erythromycin. Azithromycin. Tetracycline. Doxycycline. Dapsone. Minocycline. Minocycline is the most effective oral antibiotic. Combination with topical retinoids improves efficacy and benzoyl peroxide decreases resistance. It has to be given for the duration of four to six months. Hormonal therapy for acne. Hormonal therapy is used for patients with moderate acne who also need contraception or those who need hormonal treatment to regulate hormonal irregularities. Drugs used. Antiandrogens. Cyproterone acetate, 50 to 100 mg per day. Oral contraceptives. 35 micrograms of ethanyl estradiol with 2 mg of cyproterone acetate or 30 micrograms of ethanol estradiol with 3 mg of drospirinone Q. Spironolactone. Isotretinoin. A derivative of vitamin A, known as 13-cis-retinoic acid, plays a pivotal role in acne management. Mechanism of Action Isotretinoin acts by decreasing the size of sebaceous glands and decreases sebum production by a remarkable 80%. It also effectively diminishes the occurrence of comedones. Indication is indicated for severe forms of acne, known as nodulocystic acne, acne recalcitrant to routine treatment. Acne conglobata. Dosage. The recommended dosage ranges from 0.5 to 1 mg per kilogram per day is given after meals. Cumulative dose typically lies between 120 to 150 mg per kilogram. Acne in pregnancy. Topical benzoyl peroxide or azelaic acid. Oral erythromycin. Physical modalities. Comedone extraction. Aspiration of cystic lesions. Intralesional steroids. Laser therapy. It acts by destroying propionibacterium acnes by targeting the porphyrins produced by the bacteria. Photodynamic therapy, using blue-red light photodynamic therapy, employs a combination of blue and red light to trigger a response in the porphyrins present in the bacteria. Intense pulse light. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.